Hi, I am Dr. Arsalan Khan and today we are going to discuss the metabolic pathway and mechanism of glycolysis. Prior to discussing the glycolysis, we have to explain the respiration. It is the series of complex oxidation reduction reactions in which energy is released by the oxidation of organic molecules. For example, we have the organic molecule glucose. Its oxidation occurs and various redox reactions or oxidation reduction reactions take place here and energy is released from this glucose molecules in the form of ATPs. This whole process it is called respiration. Respiration has two types the aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration refers to the respiration in which glucose molecule or any other organic molecule is oxidized in the presence of oxygen molecule. Atmospheric oxygen is available for breakdown of glucose molecule as in this reaction we have seen that the glucose molecule is broken down by the oxygen and energy is released in the form of ATP. So such type of respiration in which oxygen is available is called aerobic respiration and the respiration in which oxygen is unavailable or the respiration in the absence of oxygen it is called anaerobic respiration. Pathway of glycolysis it is common to both aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration. Simply we can say that glycolysis is a common step for the breakdown of glucose molecules in aerobic respiration as well as anaerobic respiration. Glycolysis is a metabolic pathway of respiration process. It may be defined as the process of breakdown of glucose or any other hexose molecule but most commonly we use the glucose molecule. So the breakdown of glucose molecule into pyruvates. In this case glucose molecule it is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate. This is the chemical formula of pyruvate C3H4O3. So one glucose molecule is broken down into two pyruvate molecules by the process of glycolysis. It is broken down through series of enzymatic reactions which we will discuss step by step and energy is released in this process. So during this process of breaking glucose molecule into pyruvate molecule, energy is released in the form of ATPs and NADH. In glycolysis process, four ATPs are yielded and two molecules of NADH are released. Next is site. So the process of glycolysis it takes place in cytosol of the cell. Cytosol is the fluid portion of cytoplasm. So we can say that glycolysis occur in the cytoplasm of cell. Unlike other steps of the respiration, the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain which take place in the mitochondria of cell, the glycolysis occur in cytosol or cytoplasm of the cell. The metabolic mechanism of glycolysis is subdivided into two phases, the preparatory phase and oxidative phase. Preparatory phase of the glycolysis, it is expensive phase, it uses two ATP molecules and prepares the glucose molecule for further oxidation into the pyruvate molecule. So it uses ATP molecules. While the oxidative phase, it is a rewarding phase because it produces energy. It produces four ATPs and two NADH molecules. This is handsome amount of energy which is used in oxidative phase. By step, the preparatory phase and oxidative phase will be discussed in today's lecture for the complete mechanism of glycolysis. The preparatory phase of glycolysis is very simple. It includes five steps. It starts with the glucose molecule, primary organic molecule which is the source of energy in the human or animal's bodies. At the very outset, ATP molecule present in the cell donates a phosphate to this glucose molecule leaving behind the ADP molecule. So this phosphate it enters the glucose molecule and attach itself to the carbon number 6 of glucose molecule. So this is called glucose 6 phosphate. The process in which ATP molecule it gives phosphorus to the glucose molecule to yield glucose 6 phosphate it is called phosphorylation. So this is the first step phosphorylation in which phosphate group is attached to the glucose molecule. This is called phosphorylation. In next step the glucose 6 phosphate molecule it just isomerizes and the glucose molecule is converted into fructose molecule. The phosphate remains attached to the carbon number 6. So this is called fructose 6 phosphate and this step is called isomerization because only isomerization has taken place. So the first step was phosphorylation, the second step was 
isomerization. Now again this fructose 6-phosphate obtains a phosphate from another ATP molecule leaving behind the ADP molecule. This phosphate enters the carbon number 1 of fructose and constitute fructose 1,6 by phosphate. Carbon number 6 had already phosphate group. Now the another phosphate group has attached to the carbon number 1 of fructose. This step is again phosphorylation because phosphate group is attached to the fructose molecule. So this is the third step in which phosphate has attached to the fructose molecule, the phosphorylation. In the fourth step, fructose 1,6 by phosphate molecule has been broken down into two molecules of three carbon each. This is called splitting. The fourth step, it is called splitting because in this step the fructose 6 carbon molecule has been broken down or split into two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone 3 phosphate. This is 3 carbon compound glyceraldehyde to which phosphate is attached on the third carbon and dihydroxyacetone is also 3 carbon compound to which the phosphate group is attached on the third carbon. So in both cases the phosphate group is attached because fructose had two phosphate attached at 1 and 6 carbon. These two molecules have been separated during splitting process and one molecule of phosphate was attached to the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate the second molecule was attached to the dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So this was the fourth step of splitting. Next step is again isomerization. The fifth step. As we know that glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or dihydroxyacetone 3-phosphate, these both are organic molecules made up of three carbon atoms each. So dihydroxyacetone phosphate, it is converted or isomerized into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So at the end of preparatory phase, we have utilized two ATP molecules. The first ATP was utilized with glucose molecule. The second ATP molecule reacted with the fructose molecule. So the expenditure of two ATP molecules. And at the end of the preparatory phase, we obtained, we got two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. G3P. Most often you have seen this G3P. This is the code of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So the preparatory phase ends here with the formation of two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate at the expenditure of two ATP molecules undergoing through these five steps. The next phase of glycolysis is oxidative phase. Again it has five steps and we are starting with two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate obtained from the preparatory phase. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is three carbon molecule at which phosphate is attached on the carbon number 3. So in the very first step, two processes take place simultaneously. The first one is dehydrogenation and second is phosphorylation. Dehydrogenation means that one hydrogen ion, it is picked up by NAD molecule and NAD is reduced into NADH or simply we can say that NAD molecule, it picks up the hydrogen from glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and it is converted into its reduced form and converting the glyceraldehyde into phosphoglycerate. The second step is phosphorylation. Phosphorylation means that addition of phosphate group. A phosphate group is added to this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and it converts it into the 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate. Bis-phosphoglycerate is also 3-carbon molecule to which the phosphate was attached to carbon number 3 from the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and other phosphate has been added to it on the first carbon. It became 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate. So at this stage, two processes simultaneously worked. The first one was dehydrogenation in which hydrogen was removed from the glyceraldehyde. The second was addition of phosphate called phosphorylation. The next step, substrate level phosphorylation took place. Substrate level phosphorylation, it means the production or synthesis of energy directly from the organic molecule or organic substrate. The process of synthesis of energy directly from the organic molecule or substrate, it is called substrate level phosphorylation. As we have seen here that the molecule 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate 
it has two phosphate molecules. So the phosphate of carbon number one, it will be donated to ADP molecule and ATP will be synthesized. So in this step, ATP has been synthesized from this organic molecule. This is called substrate level phosphorylation because here this organic molecule 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate served as substrate molecule. So ATP has been produced here. P has been produced here converting this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate into 3-phosphoglycerate. The phosphoglycerate molecule remained the same, phosphoglycerate. The carbon number 1 last is phosphate group and the carbon number 3 retained its phosphate group. So here the phosphate is present only at carbon number 3. The molecule is called 3-phosphoglycerate. Next step is isomerization in which 3-phosphoglycerate has been converted into 2-phosphoglycerate. The carbon number 3 phosphate was shifted to carbon number 2. So here the molecule has phosphate at carbon number 2. Therefore, it is called 2-phosphoglycerate. Next step is dehydration in which the water molecule has been removed from this phosphoglycerate molecule and dehydration takes place. The loss of water molecule from the phosphoglycerate converts it into the phosphoenol pyruvate. Finally, substrate level phosphorylation, the phosphoenol pyruvate, it is converted into pyruvate molecule by losing this phosphate. This phosphate is donated to ADP molecule which produces ATP. So again ATP has been produced from this organic molecule, this is called substrate level phosphorylation. So in this oxidative phosphorylation, we have seen that two ATP molecules have been produced and one NADH has been produced. But we know that before entering the oxidative phase, we had two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate obtained from the preparatory phase. So we will multiply these energies into two. So the whole reaction can will be multiplied into two because we had two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecules at the start. So the total energies produced will be ATPs multiplied by two and one NADH multiply by 2. So 2 and 2, 4 ATPs and 2 NADH molecules, these were synthesized during the oxidative phase of glycolysis. So simply if we review that, oxidative phase we had 2 molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The both of the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecules undergo same mechanism to be converted into pyruvate molecule. Firstly, the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecule, it gains a phosphate group and becomes 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate it also loses hydrogen which reduces the NAD molecule into NADH. Then 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, it loses phosphate group attached to the carbon number 1, converting it into the 3-phosphoglycerate. That phosphate was used in the synthesis of ATP molecule. Then 3-phosphoglycerate molecule was isomerized into 2-phosphoglycerate molecule. Then 2-phosphoglycerate molecule again lost water. It, it was subjected to dehydration and it was converted into phosphoenol pyruvate after the removal of water molecule from 2-phosphoglycerate. The phosphoenol pyruvate, it, it lost phosphate in synthesis of ATP, leaving behind the pyruvate molecule. This was the final product of glycolysis. C3H4O3 is the chemical formula of pyruvate. So at the end of glycolysis, we have two molecules of pyruvate and four ATP molecules and two NADH molecules, out of which he had utilized two ATP molecules in the preparatory phase. So the net energy produced during the glycolysis pathway, we have four ATPs produced in creative pathway and two ATPs utilized in preparatory phase. We have two ATP molecules. The net production of the ATP molecules in glycolysis is two ATPs.